Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about the Reaper regulator and even more importantly, the new Huma Raptor regulator for the Leshy 2. So we just got these in and I'm gonna show you how to remove the Reaper regulator from the OEM Edgun buttstock and we're going to install the new Huma Raptor regulator. What's cool about this is that there's less than one bar variation uh, when you set the regulator up over the course of tens of thousands of cycles. So these are extremely accurate competition set regulators, and this one's also a transverse rig. You don't have to do any machining or any major work to switch them out. So we're gonna talk about how to do it, and I'm gonna first remove the Edgun regulator, the OEM one. Of course, before we start, I'm gonna make sure that we're safe. Remember that working with high pressure parts can be dangerous. You wanna ensure that your buttstock is fully empty. You wanna also make sure that you're wearing proper eye protection and gloves if needed. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the regulator and plenum from the buttstock. This ensures that obviously we don't have any pressure in here and it's much easier just to work with the regulator. Okay, so we can set aside the other part and we're going to first remove the adjustment screw from the OEM Reaper regulator. It's best to use the Edgun spanner wrench, but if you don't have it, you can use Niplex pliers. Just go ahead and locate the four pins and unscrew the adjustment ring. Once you've unscrewed the adjustment ring, you can set that off to the side. Next, it's easiest if you have a set of needle nose pliers to pull the plunger out. And once you've pulled the Belleville washers and plungers out, you can also set that to a side. It goes without saying that we are working on an extremely clean environment so that we don't get any dust or debris inside of our regulator. All right, so now we're going to take our spanner wrench. Now, a lot of times we put a little bit of Loctite in here. So if that's the case, you don't need to put a lot of heat to this. Just a heat gun will get this broke loose. For the video purposes that we've already broken it loose, just to keep it succinct for you. Okay, so now once we've removed the cup... We're gonna set that aside and we are gonna take out the filter. In case you guys didn't know that's what this is. It's a filter to keep from stuff getting inside the regulator because we it does use a micro ball. Now, once you look inside the regulator, you're gonna see the air intake hole for the regulator. This comes from the high pressure side. So at this point, we can use a little bit of canned air or you can use an air compressor. You're gonna locate the hole, put your straw in there and blow it, and what that will do is remove your seal. Now in your seal, you're gonna have a little ceramic ball, or it could be a little steel coated ceramic ball with a little spring. So we're gonna go ahead and set those off to the side. The next step we're gonna do is take a little bit of denatured alcohol, and we are gonna clean the inside of the regulator port. It's really important that we start with a really clean surface and brand new silicon grease. And if you have like a little bit of a microfiber towel in there. We're also going to use our canned air to blow it for you before we put anything in there, just to make sure that there's no debris. Okay, so now that we've got that nice and clean, we're going to take a little bit of silicon, pure silicon. We don't want to use anything else. It doesn't take much. You can see I don't have very much there. And we're going to coat the inside of the regulator, especially the porthole there. Okay, once we have enough silicon inside the port, we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna talk about the regulator. So when you get your regulator, it's gonna come, there's gonna be two bags inside. The first bag here is going to be the high pressure piston and it's gonna have two extra seals. Those seals you just save for later in case you wear them out. They can compress over time, or if you over compress the regulator, you can damage those. So they're just extra in case you need them. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the piston seal out of the bag, and it's gonna have a little O-ring and a brass. And if you look at it, see if I can get it nice and focused here, you see that there's, it looks like a screw head, a Phillips screw head on one side and a piston on the other. So the nipple is gonna go up. So X down, 
Phillips down. So we're going to locate Maybe at this point it might be easier to use some needle nose pliers so that you can fish it in there. And we're not going to use any metal to push it in though. We're going to use our finger. So as soon as I get it lined up in the hole, I'm going to take my finger and I'll be quiet for a second. You can listen for the click. Okay. When you hear that click, you know that you have it sealed. Now the next step is the regulator is put together and we're going to disassemble it because it's shipped like this to keep it clean. So it should just be hand tight inside of the high pressure cup. So, and uh, just be patient, there are a lot of threads on this. Okay, so when you start to get it to the end, you're gonna turn it upright. So, and you'll see why in a second here. So I'll move my hand out of the way so you can see. Okay because we don't want to spill all the stuff inside. And remember those white seals I said they're extra? So there's that one, we're gonna leave it just like that. And we're gonna turn it up. And if you drop it over, don't worry, there's a mark of which end should go up. So the little silver piece should be looking at you. Now, we're gonna take our high pressure cup. And at this point, you're gonna need a quarter. So we're gonna thread it in. And when we get to the end here, we're going to use our quarter and find our two and just tighten it nice tighten it down so it should be flush and nice and tight okay so we just want to make sure that it's tight we don't need to really use any tools or anything like that to get it tight now the next step is you're going to turn your regulator or excuse me your plenum over the reason why you're going to do that is you're going to see that little hole right there we want this to go inside that hole so we're going to turn this upside down locate the threads remember the threads are fine so we're going to go slow until you have timed them and then you're just going to keep threading them all the way through until you have them Kind of enough where you can you can feel it when it starts to go in there you can feel when it actually finds its way inside of the piston housing okay and i like to just go hand tight we are going to return our filter back inside and if you forgot that's okay it's a 21 millimeter Make sure it's nice and snug. Okay, now we have our Raptor, our new Raptor ready to go, and we can reassemble it on the gun. Now, I always get a lot of questions. How do I make sure that the plenum is set up so that I can install a gauge and I can adjust it? Uh, in this case, it's not too bad, so I'm okay with that right there. Uh, what's kind of nice is if you end up with it down like this, it will never hit your face. Although it's far enough forward, it probably won't. But um, you can always back this off a little tiny bit. There's enough in there. Um, there's enough space or enough distance in between the high pressure and low pressure side that it seals not on the threads, but on the O-ring that touches it. So it doesn't necessarily need to be all the way tight. But in this case, I think we're going to be okay. But we're going to see where our valve head ends up. Okay, so our valve head is way off on this one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start timing it by releasing the rear. That's a four millimeter in the back. And we're going to just line it up. And I'm okay with that because I can still reach that with a wrench and this is in a good position. So again, there's a little bit of leeway on both the valve head up here and the plenum to high pressure side in how far, how many threads you need to tighten up. Obviously we don't want a huge gap here, but a half a thread or half a turn is not gonna make any difference on how it seals. Okay, so at this point, let's make some space here and get rid of our tools. And we're gonna see how this thing regulates. So what we're gonna do 
is we're going to remove the gauge plug. This is a four millimeter. And we're gonna take the gauge plug out. And we're gonna take our new, this is our new Ed Gun gauge. These will be coming out soon. I think Ed told me they would be in November. So we're in November now. I think they look good. And I like a digital gauge because they're so, so much more accurate than everything's in position. Double check everything before I gas it up with this handy easy fill. And we can go just above 200. We don't need to go that high. Okay, at this time, it's very normal for you not to pass any air through here. We're going to ignore the little black section. And we're going to adjust the sub-assembly and watch the regulator pressure come up. This can easily be done with a little spanner. See, this thing kind of goes all the way down to 28. It's kind of surprising. We're at 90. Let's adjust the sub-assembly a little bit more. One twenty. I think we're going to go to one thirty on this. We might go a little bit higher. One thirty-five. And remember that <clears throat> these Ed Gun gauges are accurate within a tenth of a bar. So the fact that it's not moving or creeping at all is pretty impressive. I think we should go up a little bit more though. All right, guys. So I went ahead so you're not bored. I adjusted it off camera. You can see here that uh, I got it up to two thirteen. I think I'm uh, happy with that. You can always take it back down, but remember, when you take it back down, you've got to turn it and then bleed it off or it's not going to change. So that's essentially how you assemble it. The, uh, just remember that the black center piece does not move. The outer silver piece does, and you're going to back it out for more pressure and turn it in for less. But again, it's not going to change unless I bleed this off.